Hello, MCU fans. Today, we're going to take a look at everything we learned from the Fantastic Four movie about the multiverse, and we'll see how it aligns with the facts we've learned up to this point. Now, there will be spoilers for the movie, but as long as you're okay with that, then let's dive right in and see what we can find out. Don't forget, we have an August contest running all month long. Be a subscriber, leave a comment. You can win a book or a steelbook. Best of luck. And we have a membership option with lots of cool perks, so you might check it out in case you're interested. Plus, hang around to the end of the video, and I'll talk about the Doomsday Countdown rewatch on the Discord. All right, so what did we learn about the multiverse from the movie? Well, first I want to look at some of the facts that we've already learned, and then we'll see how those mesh with the new facts from the movie. All right, so it seems that Marvel is combining two real-world theories, the Many Worlds theory and the Eternal Inflation theory, to build their multiverse in the MCU. So we're going to look at each one one at a time and also talk about what additional facts we learn from the Fantastic Four movie. All right, so the Many Worlds theory is normally drawn something like this, and it's very simple. It envisions that our universe is just one of numerous parallel worlds that branch off from each other nanosecond by nanosecond without intersecting or communicating. And basically every quantum transition taking place in every star, in every galaxy, in every remote corner of the universe is splitting our local world on Earth into myriad copies of itself. So, okay, we've seen this before, right? I mean, first of all, it was at least alluded to by Hulk's famous speech. If you travel to the past, your past becomes your future. And your former present becomes the past, which now can't be changed by your new future. Man, what a mouthful. But basically, this was saying, hey, if you go in the past, it creates a branch, right? So you can't change the past. That's basically the many worlds theory. Now, it's even more clearly shown in Endgame when the Ancient One talks about removing one of the stones, in this case, the time stone, and how that creates a branch. All right, so then we continue to see the many worlds theory come into play during the Loki series, the nexus events that create branches. Obviously, we saw lots of branching throughout the series, and of course, we saw branching in Deadpool and Wolverine as well. All of these are examples of the many worlds theory. We also see it with the branching from the What If episodes. This is from the timeline book showing us how each of the What If episodes branches off the sacred timeline. And of course, the most famous example of the Many Worlds theory is Loki's tree. I mean, it's basically a tree with branches. Okay, so do we see the Many Worlds theory in the Fantastic Four movie? Well, you gotta dig really deep, but this engineered magazine has an article written by Reed Richards named Quantum Realm 101. So obviously, if he understands Quantum Realm 101, then he understands 201, 301, 801, etc. I mean, the dude is the smartest person alive. And obviously, quantum physics is the reason we get the branching. That's why things in the many worlds theory work the way they do. So this indicates that Reed understands the many worlds theory as well as quantum physics in general. All right, so then let's talk about eternal inflation. Now, of course, in Far From Home, Mysterio was full of it, right? He was not multiversal. He was lying. But Peter's response is what's so interesting. He says, sorry, you're saying there's a multiverse? I thought that was theoretical. That changes how we understand the initial singularity. We're talking about an eternal inflation system. So I want to point out it's actually Peter himself that brings eternal inflation into play in the MCU. Okay, so what is eternal inflation? So the theory of internal inflation says that once inflation starts, it never completely stops. Rather, it ends in places and universes form there. We call them pocket universes because they're not everything that exists, and we're living in one of these pocket universes. So notice the big difference here. These are not connected to each other. They're not branched. Quantum physics is not what's causing this. It's basically multiple singularities. Multiple big bangs are creating this. All right, so where else have we seen eternal inflation in the MCU? Well, he who remains himself talked about it when he discussed universes stacked on top of his own. Notice they're not branched, they're not connected, this isn't quantum physics, this is eternal inflation, because obviously he who remains understands quantum physics and the many worlds theory, he's the one that created these monitors for the TVA. So what he's showing Loki and Sylvie here is a different concept. Universes that are not connected, instead they were created by eternal inflation. We also see it discussed by the Beast when he talks about realities parallel to your own. And sure enough, in the Fantastic Four movie, Reed discusses this equation not only confirms alternate dimensions, but it suggests that parallel Earths exist on different dimensional planes. So once again, this idea of parallel Earths. And keep in mind, he understands quantum physics. If he was talking about the many worlds theory, he would have said branched universes. Instead, he's talking about parallel Earths on different dimensional planes. And in fact, we see that in his diagrams, right? These look definitely like Parallel Earths, not branched, not connected, but parallel. And here we see on his chalkboard, 
a rough sketch of a Penrose diagram. And if we look at the actual scientific theory behind it, it's taking you from one universe to another parallel universe. So not branched, but parallel via a black hole. And we even see that when he was talking about that crazy idea of teleporting the Earth to a different location, that he had on his chalkboard the idea of maybe even teleporting it to a parallel universe. Crazy, right? So yeah, definitely the movie talks about eternal inflation and the many worlds theory. Okay, so let's talk about places where we saw both of them at play together. So in the Quantum Mania movie, Kang said the other Kangs were playing with time, right? He says, I saw their chaos, and notice he's got a universe he's forming in his hand, and then he throws it in the air, and he says it was spreading across realities. Okay, so this looks exactly like the stacked universes He Who Remains talked about. Notice they're not connected, they're not branched, but we do see the many worlds theory at play with the branches coming off the universes. In fact, he says, universes start colliding. We have endless incursions because notice each of the parallel universes are branching out more and more timelines until finally they intersect and that creates incursions between these two parallel universes. And that's why he summarizes by saying, I saw the multiverse and it was dying. All right, another example of both many worlds and eternal inflation is when Michael Waldron, for the assembled episode for the making of Multiverse of Madness, said that it's impossible, near impossible, to travel from one universe to another. In Loki, you can kind of hop between one timeline branch to another, but you got to be anchored to some original timeline. But what America can do, she can jump from one universe to another one. She can literally do the impossible. So he's combining the idea of the many worlds theory in Loki with the eternal inflation theory in Multiverse of Madness. And it's important to note that Waldron is coming back to do some multiversal consulting on both Doomsday and Secret Wars. In this Hollywood Reporter article, Feige explains that Michael Waldron is also helping. And that's important, because I don't think he's writing the script. Instead, he's using his knowledge from Loki Season 1, which he wrote, and of course from Multiverse of Madness, which he also wrote. Now, I do know some people don't like how Wanda was treated in the movie uh, by Waldron's script, and I totally respect that. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm focusing on the multiversal aspects of both Loki and Multiverse of Madness. The dude is the one that created all of it. And it is worth noting, I did this video called A Relatively Short History of the Multiverse, even though it's an hour and 42 minutes, but I sent a link to it to Michael Waldron. And to his credit, he watched it and said, amazing video, this is the stuff we dreamt of when we were locked in the Loki room trying to invent time travel. Now that was very nice of him to say, and I'm sure I didn't get everything right in the video, but I think he's pointing at the fact that my overall theories of how many worlds and eternal inflation fit together, that was correct. And I think both of the two theories come together so nicely when we look at Loki's tree and how it relates to the rest of the multiverse. So Loki's tree is obviously Earth-616, with Loki sitting at the bottom, you know, basically giving it life, and all the branches are the what-if branches. Now, I believe that that is the many worlds theory. Then eternal inflation is where we get the other universes, 838, 828, 1005, the Spider-Man movies, Daredevil, Blade, you know, you name it. All of these are separate universes. They are the eternal inflation part of the theory. So that's how the many worlds in eternal inflation come together, and that's why we're going to see the incursions happening between these universes and the tree. And then I think it all comes together nicely with this incredible summary that Aegon V left on one of my videos. This is fantastic. So she says, a multiverse is a forest of these trees, each with their own Big Bang, eternal inflation, and offshoot timeline branches, many worlds, and these trees are canopy shy. If they touch each other, they may annihilate each other. Tony Stark figured out how to travel up and down a single tree and between its branches, vertical travel. America Chavez can travel between trees, but always seems to arrive at the same relative time period of that tree, horizontal travel. And the Kangs, and I would argue the TVA obviously, can do both. They can also stand outside the forest and marvel at the trees. Incredible. I think that perfectly summarizes everything that we've seen basically since the beginning of the multiverse saga. It all comes together so, so well. Okay, so let me know your thoughts on all this. Do you think these theories are right? And do you think the Fantastic Four continues to build upon these theories as we head towards Doomsday? You know, I love to read and respond to everything, so let me have it. Give me all your thoughts, positive or negative, about these theories. And don't forget, we have that August contest. Be a subscriber, leave a comment, win a book or a steelbook. And we have the membership option in case you're interested in that. And I always love to mention the Discord. Here we are actually talking about this video when people are asking, hey, did the Fantastic Four movie give us anything new about the multiverse? Well, these are my thoughts on that. 
And I promised I would talk about the Doomsday Countdown Watch on the Discord. Every day listed here at 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll watch a different movie or show as we prepare for the December 18th, 2026 release of Doomsday. So we have 2,300 members across the globe, conversations 24-7, and I'll leave a pinned comment so you can join. Also, if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content, and we'll all continue to enjoy the ever-growing, the ever-changing Marvel Cinematic Universe.